What's going on, everybody? This is uh, Mr. Crawlings at Nature's Jewels coming back at you with a vivarium update. I just kind of wanted to show you guys what we got going on here. Um, the planted section is doing much better. I took the pea puffer out of there and uh, added some grass shrimp and some snails and uh, all the baby guppies that I ended up getting from my females are in there. And they're growing, they're growing really well. So it'll be nice once they get bigger. I got the male and female separated for now. Uh, the pink star bromeliad is now front and center. It wasn't doing well. It was actually getting pushed out of that top section. The purple wandering Jew is growing like crazy. It is a low light loving plant and this is more than enough light. So it's kind of getting tall and gangly. So I have to keep trimming it back to get it to bush out more. So keep taking cuttings and moving them around. That pothos was cut back again. We got some small new growth on that. Sorry about the water spotting, just did a water change today. Um, I took some of my little uh, grassy aquatic plants down here. I forgot what the hell they're called. But anyway, put some of that up there and it's actually growing really well. Um, I should wipe down the glass a little bit better. This is kind of a last ditch effort just to get a video out real quick for you guys to show you how it's doing. That Amazon, or uh, Australian Fern's doing really good. Growing upright, I'm waiting for those branches to get a lot longer and hopefully they'll start hanging over. But the idea is to stunt its growth because these are very, they get, they're a medium sized fern. Um, but, you know, with the idea that sometimes, um, you know, you'll see them in Florida and they'll be growing off trees and stuff like that, other nutrient poor soils, they kind of start to flop over and that'll create the overhead uh, coverage that the red-eyed croc skinks require. You can see I moved some more of the purple wandering Jew down there. Uh, the pitcher plant, you know, they're starting to wither and die. We had them for quite a while um, and so did the ones in the back, but here you can see my one is still doing really good and I've started supplementing in the uh, pitcher itself um, not only am I, pu I put a little bit of distilled water in there maybe about a inch or so since this is a larger pitcher and I've been uh, crumbling up uh, fish flake food as a protein um, um, supplement but as you can see uh, there was some of my other YouTube viewers, they were a little concerned with the lighting level of the Fenix 24-7, if it would be enough to supply this plant with growth. And as you can see right here, looks like we got a new pitcher forming. This is a whole new leaf. It's trying to focus on my finger. We got two more up there, here and here. And then in the back, it's hard to tell. Let me go over the screen top here. Um, Jesus keeps wanting to focus on the screen. Let's see if I can get around here. If I zoom in there, we got some new spikes there for some new leaf growth. Anyway, so as long as there's new leaves growing and it's not yellowing out, uh, the plant seems to be bouncing back from being in there. Uh, down here in this little pot, where's my finger? There it is. Um, is actually a sun dewdrop uh, carnivorous plant that was shipped in this cold weather and it didn't do well at all. It died. The UPS guy or FedEx or whoever brought it, um, didn't knock on the door, left it outside the doorstep. Um, we were unaware that it was even here. And uh, since it was cold, we pretty much stayed indoors, hunkered down, you know, and uh, took care of the animals and you know our kids and cleaned the house did stuff like that and found it the next morning and it was you know that's what it looked like so unfortunately that's that happened but uh, the company is actually really good they emailed me back they're going to be sending a new one uh what do we got the anubis is doing really good down here in the little glass shrimp 
a lot of people do the Amanos and the Crystal Reds and stuff like that because they're uh, a lot more. You see my Darth Vader hoodie in the glare reflection there. Um, let's see if I can find one here. Let's see there. But these uh, little grass shrimp, they do a great job cleaning, man. And um, I haven't been trying to do a lot of water changes, as you can see. Um, I think I'm not. I don't have enough um, nutrients in the water. I've been sub supplementing with um, some of the what the heck is it called? Flourish by Seachem, and that seems to be helping. Um, I'm getting really long growth, really stretched out growth, but I'm getting a lot of rooting. You can see right here, and I keep propagating, trimming them down and, and moving them back so I get this really nice bushy um, background and this really low cut foreground, which I've actually trimmed these down two or three times and then also replanted uh, little sections. You could see like I just mashed a bunch in there and there, and that's already growing back and that one's starting to come back really good. And they just kind of, it just keeps kind of going like that over and over. But uh, doing about a 50% water change, which I know is a lot on this tank. But um, there's also the water behind it and stuff like that. So um, otherwise the plant, or the tank is doing really good. Um, I switched off of the 24-7 cycle when I am home, when I do have to leave out of town for work and stuff like that for business. Um... I do switch it back over to the 24-7, otherwise um, at night time I switch it to a blue on the lowest setting and then in the morning uh, I switch it to a red for about two to three hours and uh, to, to get that uh, vegetative growth. The blue is more for a flowering, I believe, or vice versa. And then I'll... Uh, I'll go to the max white from the Fenix, and then I got the two, uh, the red heat light stays on all the time, and it maintains a temperature around 70, eh, 72 to 75 degrees, and once this, this daylight, a heat bulb kicks on, it maintains a temperature of around 80 degrees, so everything seems to be doing good, and since I don't have the misters, and I actually killed the fogger on this, which you guys got to see a previous video, um, i just been manually... Um, spraying down the uh, pitcher plants and like the Amazon and the pathos and the Jews and the um, and the bromeliads uh, with the distilled water uh, just kind of just spray shooting them not not a fine mist I haven't been misting them but uh, in the substrate down here you can see I actually collected some wild mosses and I took some of that uh, dwarf grass there and I, I planted it along the tops here just to see let it all fill in really but uh haven't seen the red-eyed croc skink since this video uh posted since i since i put them in there but the other reason for the clean was uh this morning i saw a lot of scales floating around here so one of them shed and uh so i know they're still alive and they're doing well but that was part of the reason for the water change and since it's kind of cleaned up I thought I'd give you guys a, a shot of this. In the future, we're going to be adding some more carnivorous plants. And uh, I'll let you guess what kind those are going to be. It won't be the sundew. Uh, that's actually going to be getting set up in its own little uh, um, ecosphere with some other carnivorous plants. So, hope you guys enjoyed. If you want to take a guess and leave it in the comment section below, what kind of uh, carnivorous plants are going to be going in here? Uh, I'd love to hear about it and see if you guys are right. And if you're right, maybe I'll comment back. But uh, thank you for all the subscriptions. And uh, you guys have a great day. This is uh, Mr. Crawlings at Nature's Jewels signing out.